Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Valentina Rodriguez Triana, and I am faculty member at the UCLA Department of OBGYN within the Division of Minimally Invasive Gynecologic Surgery. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn a little bit more about minimally invasive surgery. I have no disclosures for this talk, and I have a few objectives. And my first objective was really just to review the different types of minimally invasive gynecologic surgeries that we offer at UCLA. From there, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the different types of diseases that we treat, and most importantly, go into some of the commonly asked questions that we get in the office from patients. So what is minimally invasive gynecologic surgery? Well, it's an exciting field within gynecology wherein we utilize very small to sometimes no incisions at all on the abdomen to be able to treat different conditions that a woman might have going on in her pelvis. Um, there are many different types of techniques that we can use to accomplish this goal. But for today, I wanted to briefly do an overview of the different types of routes of surgery that we have. There's vaginal surgery, hysteroscopic surgery, laparoscopic surgery, and the robotics. As we go through each of these topics, it'll be really important to keep in mind that it's important to talk to your doctor to figure out what kind of surgery would be right to you, pending what's going on with you, and the type of treatment that would be most appropriate. So we'll start with vaginal surgery. It is in fact the most classic and traditional type of minimally invasive surgery that we offer in that there are no incisions on a patient's abdomen. All the incisions are done from below via the vagina and we use the vagina as a way of accessing the pelvis and the abdomen to be able to treat different conditions. The types of conditions that we treat can vary depending on prolapse, abnormal bleeding, but essentially, we can do hysterectomies, pelvic organ prolapse repair, bladder incontinence repair surgeries. And along those same lines, as you think about if this is a type of surgery you might be a candidate for, I would also very much recommend that you look into the UCLA Female Pelvic Medicine and Reconstructive Surgery website as well. A lot of the minimally invasive surgeries that we do go hand in hand with the work that our team members do in that division as well. Hysteroscopic surgery is probably the most commonly performed gynecologic procedure. For hysteroscopic surgery, essentially you, the surgeon puts a camera through the cervix into the uterus, and by doing so is able to visualize inside the uterine cavity to remove any abnormalities that are inside. It's nice in that it's done under conscious sedation, there's no general anesthesia involved, and the recovery time is pretty quick. Most importantly, there are no abdominal incisions done for this kind of surgery as well. Things that we can treat via hysteroscopic surgery, submucosal fibroids or fibroids within the uterine cavity, endometrial polyps or polyps within the endometrial cavity, and even scar tissue inside of the uterus. Laparoscopic surgery, also very commonly done, especially here at UCLA. In laparoscopy, we utilize small incisions on the abdomen, about five millimeters to sometimes 12 millimeters inside, to be able to transfer our instruments and remove large pathology or things, diseases that women might have inside of the pelvis. By doing so, we're able to remove very large things like fibroids or a large uterus via very small incisions. The way that we accomplish this is by putting some carbon dioxide gas into the pelvis to really open it and see what we have to see. Examples of some of the procedures that we can do laparoscopically are fibroid removal, ovarian cyst removal, and even hysterectomies can be done laparoscopically. Depending on the extent of the surgery that needs to be done, most patients can anticipate going home the same day and a relatively quick recovery when compared against traditional surgery like open surgery. This is just a little bit of a diagram of the kind of laparoscopic instruments that we utilize to transfer through the small incisions to access what we need to access. And the visual is there of, of us filling the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas to be able to really get some good, safe visualization of what we need to access. And then robotic surgery. Robotic surgery is very much the same idea as laparoscopy in that there are small incisions on the abdomen through which we transfer our instruments, with the exception that the surgeon is actually sitting at a consult that's separate from the patient. And via that sitting at the consult separately, the surgeon's actually able to do a little bit more fine detailed work. They're also able to remove very large things like large fibroids via these techniques as well. In the same vein as laparoscopy, they have relatively fast recoveries and most patients can anticipate going home the same day. Examples of procedures that can be done via robotics or fibroid removal, complex endometriosis, hysterectomy, and also some pelvic reconstruction work. And that's 
one of the examples of what the robotic surgery can look like. This is actually using one incision on the abdomen from which several trocars or small ports can go inside to access what's happening in the pelvis. So I wanted to get to some of the Q&A because we get a lot of the same questions and I thought it would be beneficial to everyone listening in to hear some of the answers if you have these questions. So the first basic question, what are the benefits of doing a minimally invasive gynecologic surgery over a traditional open surgery? The most fundamental answer to that question is that we consider it safer. It's safer in that with the smaller, with the smaller incisions, patients can walk faster, eat sooner, do their normal activity sooner, and require less narcotics. Studies have shown us that people who undergo minimally invasive surgery have less risk of forming blood clots in the legs, less risk of pneumonias, and less risk of wound infections. And so while a minimally invasive surgery may not be the right answer for everybody, it's always important to see if you might be a candidate to have a minimally invasive procedure done, because overall it might be a safer option. So one of the questions that we get, I've been told that my fibroid is the size of a grapefruit. Am I a candidate for a minimally invasive fibroid surgery? And the answer is yes. In fact, we can remove fibroids via minimally invasive techniques that are larger than grapefruits. And the idea is that by using our instruments externally, we're able to accomplish the same things that surgeons would accomplish with an open surgery, except using much smaller incisions. So again, review it with your surgeon, but the chances are that your fibroid size would not preclude you from being able to have a minimally invasive surgery. I'm about to undergo a minimally invasive hysterectomy. If my uterus is so large, how will you be able to remove it from my body? There's a very long answer to this, and in fact, there are papers and papers written about what we call tissue extraction techniques, or being able to remove large pathology from small incisions. But the answer is that, the shortest answer is that very commonly, we end up having to break that pathology into smaller pieces. So if it's a fibroid, we can break it into smaller pieces to remove it out of smaller incisions. Same with the uterus. If it's a large uterus, we can whittle it down to a size where it can come out of a smaller orifice, saving the patient from having a very large incision on the abdomen. So there are many different ways that we can do this, but the most bottom line is that we take something large and break it into something smaller to be able to remove it via these techniques. I have a polyp and was told that I need to have it removed via hysteroscopy. I can't take more time of work. Can I go to work the next day? Yes. The beauty of having a hysteroscopic surgery is that the, gener the anesthesia is usually a conscious sedation, so no general anesthesia, meaning less fatigue um, after the surgery, and also not a whole lot of pain control requirements after. Most patients do just fine with a little bit of ibuprofen and some warm packs. So generally, it's a really nice procedure in that people don't really have to block off time from their demanding schedules to be able to take care of what they need. What are some things I should do in preparation for surgery? This might not be specific to minimally invasive surgery, but in general, anybody who's proceeding with surgery should really optimize their health first. So things like making sure they're focusing on diet, exercise, people who are smokers should really try to quit smoking. Those kinds of things really matter for the post-op period because they help for better wound healing, they help the lungs open better, and be better able really to get the blood circulating to allow for good wound healing. So in general, lifestyle changes are gonna be really important if applicable to you. The other thing that we think about is just making sure you have your support team on board. Who's gonna be helping you after surgery to make sure that if you need something, you have someone at home to help you. And along that same lines, what kind of recovery should I anticipate after a minimally invasive surgery? Again, there are long answers, but the short answer to this is that as compared to a traditional open surgery, you should expect a faster recovery. And in fact, we think with these kind of surgeries, every day you should feel just a little bit better, a little bit more back on your feet. Patients should not anticipate having to have high narcotic requirements. In fact, that's one of the beauty of this. And patients should really anticipate being able to mobilize around their homes and carry out some basic normal activities as soon as the first day after surgery. And so in preparation for life after surgery, the recovery should be relatively quick. Am I a candidate for a minimally invasive gynecologic surgery? I very much would encourage you, if you're thinking about having surgery, to look at our website and go through some of the options that we have, meet some of our providers. Everybody's issues are different, our pathologies are different, but the beauty of these kinds of surgeries is that we can tailor our treatments specific to what's going on with the patient and what their goals might be. 
And so if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our website and take a look to see if there's an option that's right for you. Thank you so much.